Hi guys, Anthony here from The Hot End. In this episode, we're going to go through part two of our Da Vinci Jr. review. Okay, so the Da Vinci Jr. is a $399 printer and it is an entry level printer. You must understand that this is not designed to take on the likes of Ultimaker or higher end printers. This is an entry level machine. That said, it does work very well. It does print very well. It has a 5.9 by 5.9 by 5.9 build volume. It has auto calibration on your Z, so it does auto bed probing. It has Wi-Fi connectivity, which means you can print directly from your computer, and then it will transmit it to the printer wirelessly and then print your job. It will also let you monitor your printer from the PC so you can see what it's doing. Now this printer comes with a one year warranty. It will also print at 100 millisecond and does not come with a heated bed. But that said, it doesn't really need it because you're only printing PLA. Now included with the printer with three sheets of uh, BuildTac type material that you can use on your printer. And uh, I actually found that it worked better just with a bit of glue stick straight on the glass. Now this uses a Bowden setup. So the motor is up the top and pushes the filament all the way through this Bowden tube into the hot end. The build quality of the machine seems quite cool. Um, I like that it's got the transparent sides on the side, which you can see here. With the transparent sides, the lighting coming through looks really cool. She'll print down to 100 micron, which is pretty nice and it uses the proprietary XYZ software. Many of you are aware that a lot of the Da Vinci style printers are locked to use their own kind of filament. And this is one of the rolls here. Um, these retail in Australia for about $50 a roll for 500 grams, which is quite expensive, but I believe you can get it cheaper online. Um, these actually have an NFC chip built in. So what that does is it will maintain uh, a record of what you've printed, meaning it can keep track of the filament usage and it'll give you low filament alerts if you start a print that's going to be too big for what you've got left on the roll. And being that it's a quality controlled filament, it, you don't need to adjust as many of the settings in the slicer because it's its own filament. Basically in the slicer you've got uh, only a few major options um, if you want to print fast or slow or medium, high quality, medium quality or low quality and uh, supports on and off and a few other basic features but you really don't need to adjust the temperatures too much. Now I printed a few things here to test. First off the bat is the Benchy. I'll show some close-ups in a second. Benchy turned out quite well. There's some Z streaks, Z marks on the print. I don't particularly know why and there's not much I can adjust to fix that but overall it does look good. The bridging worked well. The detail is there and I will give that a pass. I printed my own logo, which is quite a small print. And on this print, the um, banding is much worse, but it is a very intricate small print. So maybe with a smaller nozzle, this printer would um, smash this print fine. Now, all of the calibration prints that I've done, um, these all worked well, no issues with this. The bridging worked, the overhang worked, uh, the conical, print worked. At the top you can see it's a little blobby um, but I think a, a fan duct around the hot end would fix that problem and it actually mentions that in the quick start guide. The pyramid worked fine and the, um, the tolerances are very tight. All right so I've got the calipers here and let's test out the, uh, the test cube. Okay so the test cube is coming up at 19.99 and the accuracy of some of these other prints is quite excellent as well. So this 30 mil cube is coming in at 29.91, which is pretty good. So as for print quality, without a doubt, I have seen better prints, but in saying that, this is a $399 printer. The auto leveling of the bed takes out another calibration step, so Again, this is an easier printer for a newbie to use or a beginner. For the classroom, I think this would work well. And that's probably where this printer will end up. This will probably be donated to a local primary school for the, uh, the kids to use. I have a headache. It might be a tumor. 
It's not a tumor. So I'd like to thank XYZ for sending me this printer to review. Overall, for what it is and what it does, it does it quite well. Could it be better? Certainly. But for $399 with a Wi-Fi connectivity, auto bed calibration, nearly six inch cube print volume, the value is exceptional. For the target audience of this printer, being children or a school or just a very entry level printer, I think they've hit the nail on the head. And for that market, it is a good printer. If you are a tinkerer or like to build printers, I wouldn't recommend this printer because you are limited by the software and by using the proprietary filament. But that's not where this printer is targeted for anyway, so that's not a concern. The printer coming up next will be the XYZ Pro, which is not filament locked and is designed for more of the uh, medium level market, consumer market. So for an entry level machine, it does its job well. All right guys, if you like this video, please give me a subscription and then hit the notify alerts button. And that means that you'll be alerted whenever I put up a new video. Coming up next will be the XYZ Pro unboxing. So stick around for that one. So if you'd like to support the channel, Amazon affiliate links are down below. Patreon link is up here and eBay affiliate links are in the description below as well. Thanks guys. Peace.